Abyss time. Mr. Mr. Speaker, you have heard clearly what the majority leader has said. He is asking under what cat category of women do Milio Diambo fall? Because she's claiming that she's a former user of sanitary parts. And in the finance bill, we are discussing sanitary parts, and we went to reduce the taxes. Is she going to benefit from that? Is she opposing or supporting, Mr. Speaker? Order, Mili, you don't need rocket science to understand what you said. I understood you clearly, and we don't want to engage in debate. Nabi Nabuera, continue. <laughs> the, 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 thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, this today, I've had a lot of time to reflect on whether this country, we want to move it forward, we want to have it stagnant, or we want even to become rep repugnant. I'm saying this, Mr. Speaker, because any progressive country, any progressive system, we should have started by looking at our 2023-2024 Act, Finance Act, and asked ourselves the question, has it served us well? Number two, we should have asked us, we intended to collect an, 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 a, a certain amount of money. Did it help us collect that money? Number three, what has been the business performance for the period that 2023-2024 covered? And finally, Mr. Speaker, we should ask ourselves, has the current Finance Act helped us to mobilize savings? What is our saving ratio as a country? Mr. Speaker, as I look at that and evaluate the 2023-2024 Finance Act, I return a performance ratio of 44%. With that kind of performance ratio, you cannot come up with another act, a, a, a bill, to repeal that act, which increases the number of taxes, the amount of taxes to the public. Because you have failed to collect over 300 billion. Mr. Speaker, whereas the chairman of the Finance Committee presented to us a report here, which looked progressive. Unfortunately, it fell short of curing the problems in this bill. What are the problems in this bill? Mr. Speaker, if you look at Schedule 4 and Schedule 3, then you return a no acceptance to this bill. One, if you look at the 10% duty on Kilinga, you are only improving the status of one business person. When you look at the duty on billet, you are improving the status of the same person. You cannot create a law that only ensures that one particular individual or one particular entity of business thrives at the expense of the others. Mr. Speaker, whereas, whereas one would want to forgive the drafters of this bill for imagining that if you removed tax or if you removed the center towels that are locally manufactured, then you have cured the problem is lying. I've talked to my own daughters in the house. They tell me the center towels they use are all imported. So in other words, when you see the the, the young girls go to the street and asking us whether was Inyeshe, they mean it. Because you are making their life un unbearable. Mr. Speaker, I want to pick on an issue here. And this issue is based on Schedule 4. If you look at all the taxes under Schedule 4, on telephone, on all those things there. They are meant to help 
improve businesses. Now, if we are leaving taxes on them, and already the business community is underperforming, how do we intend to raise money? If this country cannot mobilize savings, then we rather shut up and close, the, close it. I'm asking the drafters of this bill and the chairman, with due respect, if you wanted to help us as a country, with all those changes you made, they were fundamental, then the bill loses its original form. Then you should have withdrawn the bill and given us an, an, another bill. Mr. Speaker, I oppose. Dorothy Ikiara. Dorothy Ikiara. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the outset, I say I support this bill. And Mr. Speaker, I was seated here in the House and I participated actively in passing the budget and appropriation bill.